A visualization of cycling counts per location for the Sydney region, January 2018 to June 2021 by Matthew Hounsell. The video begins with introductory maps and graphs. It then visualizes the yearly cycleway totals and with a breakdown by workday versus weekend. Then there is a visualization for the existing cycleways followed by a visualization for the pop-up cycleways followed by some additional graphs. This is a map of the locations of the cycleway counters within the Sydney region. Dark green is the existing cycleways. Light green is either the pop-up cycleways or the ones being measured as part of the pop-up cycleway data set, which is why some dots are speckled. This is a map of the pop-up cycleways as measured by the RMS and some uh, treatments for lower speed limits in the Sydney region. This graph plots the number of cyclists per suburb on the vertical axis versus the month of the year on the horizontal axis. The most popular location is the Rocks, and the second most popular location is Piermont. If you look at the third most popular location, Moore Park, you'll notice a gap in the data, and this indicates a missing sensor or a broken sensor, and this is uh, quite common in other parts of the data set. This plot shows the number of cyclists per cycleway with the Sydney Harbour Bridge being the most popular. Before the pandemic, it was receiving over 40,000 passengers per month, except for the middle of winter. And the second most popular was the Anzac Bridge cycleway, but there was a loss of data in March of 2020. This graph shows the number of cyclists per month for the pop-up cycleway data set it includes some existing cycleways such as the Sydney Harbour Bridge, but also some pop-up cycleways such as Pitch Street. Plotting the pop-up cycleway data set for the Sydney region in 2021, breaking it down to weekends and workdays, we can see that cycling is a popular mode of transport on the weekends, with numbers almost equivalent to the workdays. The following visualisations show the pop-up cycleways are very popular in Sydney.
This is the plot of the number of cyclists per day on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. As you can see, there is a lot of noise in the data set. It is unclear what the actual trend is from this graph. So if we break it down to the number of cyclists by type of day, with the workday as orange squares and the weekend as blue circles, we can see that prior to the start of the COVID-19 lockdown in April 2020, the majority of cyclists on the Harbour Bridge were during the workday, indicating a uh, work-centric pattern, and that after the start of the lockdown, there was a surge of people for three months during the weekend getting exercise, and that the weekend numbers are sustained to a higher level, and that there was a drop in the number of cyclists during the workday. However, over time, that increased increased until it was back to 2019 levels in the start of the year of 2021. This graph shows the number of cyclists on the Sydney Harbour Bridge overlaid with the temperature in pink and the rainfall in the light blue columns. There is not a clear correlation between temperature and cycling, but there is a relationship between temperature and rainfall, which is discussed in further graphs. This graph examines the data set since the pandemic due to the change in the total number of cyclists. It plots the number of cyclists on the Sydney Harbour Bridge on the vertical axis and the amount of rainfall on the horizontal axis. This scatter plot shows there is a relationship between the rainfall and the number of cyclists, with increasing rainfall reducing the number of cyclists. However, it does not result in no cyclists, and the relationship is not as clearly defined as might be expected by conventional wisdom. This plot is the number of cyclists on the Sydney Harbour Bridge since the start of the pandemic during the weekend versus the rainfall on the horizontal axis. There is a clear relationship where an increase in rainfall reduces the number of cyclists and this is most likely due to the number of weekend trips being discretionary, more about recreation than about accessing employment. It also suggests the elevated position of the Harbour Bridge is less desirable for cyclists during uh, windy or rainy days. The pandemic caused a step change in the number of cyclists, so it requires caution when analysing all of the workdays, in this case from 2018 through to 2021. But we can see in this relationship that there is a significant number of cyclists who will continue to travel even in high levels of rain when they are travelling for commuting purposes. Now this may be related to end of trip facilities in the CBD being quite good for certain workplaces which have uh, cycling storage, or it may indicate cycling trips on the rainy days were more reliable than bus or car trips with traffic being extremely high on the Harbour Bridge. Thank you for watching. Please like and share. If you wish to use this video for educational purposes, it is licensed under the Creative Commons. Thank you.